Well, hello, I'm Raida Boost, and in this brief video, I'm showing you some of the workflows in Civil 3D 2017 using Geotechnical Module that is available for Civil 3D subscription customers. After installation, Geotechnical Module can be found from a separate tab, and it is used for importing borehole data that has been received from the field to create surface models. From those surface models, you are then able to create quantity takeoffs or include that borehole data onto your profile view. And in this video, we have a look onto all those workflows. This module is developed by Kinetics and more information can be found from the help menu, also including companion products that are also developed by Kinetics and that also works with Civil 3D. We have borehole data already available that was gathered from the site. That kind of information comes in different formats and in our case we have it in AGS format. We can also have a look using a notepad what kind of information it involves. Basically borehole data is in specific format. I just close it and let's continue with Civil 3D workflow using geotechnical module. I want to import that kind of information into my project. So I'm using here empty Civil 3D drawings that is generated based on default template. But later on, of course, you can use your own template and your own styles to shape your borehole data in your drawing. First of all, I need to connect or create a new project. I can do it by starting connect or import because I don't have any project yet. So both options are giving me the same choice. So if I click connect, I can see a geotechnical module dialog. I can start by creating a new project. I can give a project ID and also name, status, category, location of site, client name and so on. Also some comments. I hit save and in this dialog I can actually connect to different projects while I'm working in Civil 3D. Once I have it, I can then select my project and hit OK. Now I'm connected to my project and I can start to import borehole data from that AGS file. Hit import, I can then see a next screen where I can select my file format. So I'm using AGS4 format, mapping will be default and then I simply hit add. I select my AGS file, hit open and next steps will be validating that information. So for example if I hit next I'm seeing that uh, my data is processed and uh, basically validated if the format is correct. I may have some warnings but in our case I can dismiss those. I hit next again. I can now see my boreholes, a couple of them, yes, and I can see also type and crown level. Of course, while I'm starting to import that kind of data, I need to have a knowledge about my units. In my case, I'm using meters. Also, borehole data comes in in meters. I hit next again, then see a summary and hit next again. Now the actual import starts and I hit finish. If I zoom extends, I can see my borehole data in my Civil 3D drawing. Once imported, I can use Orbit tool to see that imported data in various views. I can use shift and middle mouse button to see my borehole data in 3D view. I can also change my visual style, for example, picking a conceptual and it shows me different material layers in my boreholes. Let's go back to top view and I'm also changing my visual style. Before I can create a profile I need to have some surface that shows it and for that I use asset management strata tool. I hit strata and in here I can see my geology code and I can then select which of those are defining my top surface and which one are defining my base surface. I pick TS as a top and once I do that selection I automatically see that a surface is generated. I do also other selections. MG also top, ST also top, GV also top and because we are interested about quantities of some materials for this work we need to ensure we also pick base surface and let's do that for ST. So I can include with some particular geology code both visibility states. 
top and base. All of my surfaces are now generated into my Civil 3D drawing and using Toolspace and Prospect tab I can easily see that at my surfaces node I can see all those surfaces. I now close my strata view, hit strata again and we can now start to orbit our drawing again and I can see all my surfaces are generated. Let's go back to top view and also checking that my 2D wireframe is selected and now we are interested about profile views so we want to create a profile view that shows our borehole layer data. I can use a profile create tool that can be also found from geotechnical module profile create and again I will see a dialog where I can give a profile view name for example profile view one. I can pick my style, for example, full creed. And of course, while creating profile views, I need to select my alignment because I don't have it yet. I can also create that one from that dialog. So I hit create alignment and I need to just um, pick some points that define my alignment. Basically, I use a polyline command. I don't need to select my boreholes exactly from the center point because later on we can see that we may use buffer value. But let's assume that um, currently I'm using Civil 3D or Snap feature and just picking some boreholes from the center point. I select all those points that I'm interested in and I can hit escape key when I'm finished. I can see that my alignment gets a default name alignment one and I can now hit next. In here I'm also seeing a buffer value and a buffer means that if you want to show borehole itself on a profile view you don't have to select that borehole from the center point but you can also use a buffer value it's in drawing units meaning that in our case it's in meters it search from a radius of 20 meters all boreholes and includes those onto profile view if found any it is also possible to select boreholes that you are interested in from a drawing if you change your buffer value you also see a dynamic list that is changed. At the moment I can see that I have four boreholes included. But for example if I change it to 100 I can see that the list is changing and I go back to 20 meters. And now if I'm satisfied I can hit finish and of course I need to select a point to where I want to place my profile view. I'm just uh, selecting a point from the right hand side. And as you see in my default view I can already see my boreholes and also all my surface profile lines. At the moment we can already see different colors for different borehole layers but we may want to change that anyway. I can click my profile view, right click and profile view properties. I can go to my profiles tab and in here I'm seeing that I'm currently using a default style for each and every alignment. But let's assume that uh, for a top ground I want to change a color. So it will be an easy example how you can change a style. It's a civil 3D workflow. I just um, pick style column on that particular row. I then copy current selection. I give a name, for example, including TS top into its name. I then go to display tab and I'm seeing a line. Color is currently red, but I'm changing it to green. OK, apply and OK. And of course, if I dismiss my profile view properties dialog, apply OK, I can also see a change straight away on my profile view. Let's now move on and talk about Civil 3D dynamic behavior. For example, if you made a mistake or want to make a change to show different boreholes on your profile view, you don't have to start again, but you are able to easily select your alignment. And if I'm changing my PI location, you will see an immediate change on your profile view also. This is a standard Civil 3D dynamic behavior. You're able to make that change at any time and your profile view will change accordingly. And because we are using a buffer, we don't have to pick that center point, but we are able to just select some point around it and you will see that it will include all boreholes that are in range. Let's now have a look to earthwork 
quantity takeoffs. Basically, again, Civil 3D feature. Let's go to Analyze tab, and I'm using Volumes dashboard for that. In here, I can start by creating different volume surfaces. Create new volume surface. I can give a name. It can be anything you like. For example, Volume 01 in my case. I also include that style will be no display. I don't want to see this surface on my drawing. I'm only interested about um, fill or cut values. I then select Paste Surface and Comparison Surface. I'm starting from top to down, meaning that Paste Surface will be TS top, OK, and Comparison Surface MG top, OK. I hit OK and I can see my volume straight away. I can see that it shows cut volume and because I started from top to down, it will show it as a cut. If I have done it the opposite, I would have seen it as a fill value. Let's do one more. Again, create surface. Let's give a name as a volume 02, no display, base surface, MG top, OK, comparison surface, GV top, OK, and OK. And my next volume is generated in this panorama window. Let's do one more. Now volume 03, and it's between GV top, ST top, and OK. So I'm seeing my volumes in one table. Once I'm finished with my volumes, I can generate cut fill report. Again, it's standard Civil 3D feature. Generate cut fill report. My browser window opens and I can see all those values on one page. It can be easily printed out or shared with your partners. I close it and of course I can insert that table into my drawing. I use insert cut fill summary and I need to show to where to place it. Cut fill summary. So in this video we had a look how to involve borehole data into Civil 3D workflow using geotechnical module and some standard civil 3D features.